Welcome to the Gear Slum, your one-stop shop for all things guitar culture and nonsense. I'm Aaron. I'm Phil. And I'm Cole. We slum it hard so you don't have to. We slum it hard so you don't have to. That was much better. Take it we first. slum it hard so you don't have to. We slum it hard. <laughs> That sounded like uh, Christopher Walken. Oh yeah, kind of. It was good. <laughs> um, we all in that silence. What, what we were all doing is considering doing a Christopher Walken impression, <laughs> and then we all three of us bailed because we knew we yeah, we all Christian one. bailed. We Christian bailed. Um, I have two. Oh, potential good things for to talk you. <laughs> Just walking by like doo doo doo. That was my favorite part of that whole thing. Good for you. Okay, that's my Christian Bale impression. It's pretty good. Good for you. Good for you. Is that your Christopher Walken good doing an impression? You. That's my uh, walking <laughs> walking Bale. Good for yeah, you, uh, Christian Bale. No, I can't get it. I need something else to get into it. Get into the Christopher Good Walken for you. that I don't have. Good for you. Got for you. Got for you. Got for you. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Got for you. Ask not what your country can do for you. But what you can do, good for you. <laughs> Stupid. So I got well, a Telecaster good. guitar. And we're making a Telecast. Mm-hmm. Oh, we so we are telecasters. We are telecasters. <laughs> yeah, we are telecaster. That sounds like a <laughs> like some activist movement. We are all telecaster, <laughs> and uh, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Which it's the uh, American it's standard. It's pretty cool. American oh, it's standard. part of the Magnificent Seven, right? From like 2016 it was or something. Either Magnificent Seven or one of the other, one of the like the. 15 for 15 or it was one of the I think it was the Magnificent Seven. Was it 30 for 30? 30, yeah. They did a documentary about this guitar. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good at basketball in high school but it didn't get good enough grade, a good enough ACT score to get into college, you know. Um, So yeah, it's awesome. But I'm going to, I'm reminded whenever I get a new Telecaster that I like having at least a four-way switch on there. Mm. And I also like flipping the control plate around. Oh, that's one thing I have not done yet. Why do you so do you that? Want, Just so you have more access you want volume? to the volume pedal? I mean, volume knob? No, it's because I'm... Or so that you don't hit the switch. Sloppy, yes, and I hit the pickup switch. Okay. But if you flip it around, then you're hitting the volume. Yeah, but... But, but you're less likely it to smash it into like a different it. position. Yeah. Hitting against it okay. doesn't move it necessarily. Um, Interesting. Yeah. So I can dig it. And I'm wondering, does anyone else? The problem is, usually the wiring is tight enough <clears throat> that you can't just flip it around without mm-hmm. moving some of the wiring around because the the like the two knobs don't move very much. Oh but yeah. The, the switch moves all the way to the other side, you know. Mm-hmm. Which I tried to flip this one around, and it is too tight to do with that rewiring. But then I was so you're saying you have to like add extra length, basically. Yeah, just to the three way okay. switch. And that's yeah. that's signal degradation right there. Yeah, De- you're degrading. You're degrading your signal. <laughs> Guys, I don't believe in degradation anymore. This is in the fifties, you know. <laughs> De- degradation. That's degradation done. Degradation. De- degradation. degradation. <laughs> Are you a degradation po- provocateur, Phil? <laughs> the reality is there are whoa, whoa. there are degrees of degradation. 
Dude, I fell on my bike the other day. I got like this huge degradation on my arm when I fell. <laughs> that, was, that was a stretch. I know. Was... Are you saying abrasion? Yeah, that, exactly. Is that that's what you were going with that? Okay. <laughs> when you have to explain it, that's not a good sign. I was a little contused by that one. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. You caused some contusion. Idiots. <laughs> we're all idiots. Me, me, but... Casa. Say, uh, but one thing I like about this guitar is Casa. it has a matching. It's S. the surf green. It's seafoam green, S. Uh-huh. and it's and it's pretty blue. Um, but it's it, so pretty blue. It's pretty blue. <laughs> pretty you pretty blue. Dead bird, you're blind. Pretty blue. <laughs> pretty blue. <laughs> to me, <laughs> Billy and Fuzzy, oh, the blind. You kid? sold. You sold Petey to a blind kid. <laughs> Petey didn't have a head. <laughs> Harry Lloyd I took, I took care, care of, of it. it I took care of it <laughs> um, so it has the matching headstock but it also has the like the belly cut on the uh-huh. back which they added in like 2012 I think to the American standards the one thing I don't like though it has the bent steel saddles which I know were on the American standards for a long time but I kind of don't like those saddles. I prefer the block ones. Is that weird? Mm. Um, like the six individual saddles, you know? Yeah, I don't. I've only ever had a telly with uh, like the three saddles. Oh, okay. And so it's the I same on strats. They're the same saddles, you know. Mm. I'm probably well, gonna buy okay. GFS. GFS sells some replacements for like fifteen bucks. That what I is it that my, you don't I like about the strat? <clears throat> Part of it is because the screws stick out the top more hmm. the height adjustment screws so they're kind of hmm. sharp if you rest your palm on the bridge yeah and the other part is you're limited on how high like if you picture the metal is bent hmm. and it kind of goes up and back down where the screw is so yeah. there's only a little bit of space where the screw is actually attached to the saddle and oh, if you yeah, want to yeah. go outside of that range you're kind of screwed so like on my strat yeah. Before I shimmed the neck, I wanted to put the saddles higher, and I had basically run out of thread on the saddle. But with the block yeah. saddles, the threads go all the way through it, you know. Right. So it can be at the bottom of the saddle higher, and not just the yeah. top. Yeah. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. So. Does there think, any like feel or sound difference in like playing? I mean, it feels different. I like the way that it feels when your hand rests on it. But no, as far mm. as like the feel of the strings or this, yeah. I haven't. I mean, I'll do a sound comparison if I get some new ones, but I wouldn't expect there. I mean, I could see there being a sound difference, but I've never noticed one specifically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if anything on your guitar is going to change the sound, it would be the saddles, potentially. Yeah, but I would imagine, like, the the metal would make more difference than... Well, I mean, I guess you have less mass or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it'd probably all factor into it. But I got the I ordered some GFS ones. That's what I have on my Strat right now, and I really mm-hmm. like them. It was kind of one of those. They're like fifteen dollars, and it's kind of a mm-hmm. crapshoot, you know. Just the saddles. Yeah, yeah, but it, they fit really well, and they. You should have got graphite saddles. <sighs> Maybe I should. They do actually. GFS sells some graphite ones too, but they're like fifty dollars. Mm. Yeah. They sell some roller ones too, which is, yeah, I don't can't see needing a roller saddle on a telly. Yeah, I wouldn't think with a hard tail it would really make any difference. No. Nope. So I've always been confused by the um traditional bridge with the three things. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess we call they're saddles, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The but they're parts. like the three dual saddles mm-hmm. yes. right that feels less manipulative to me yeah it is manipulatable it is you definitely you have go. to like make some com um not compensation but some con what am i trying to say compromises yeah i guess so like you have to kind of like decide compensation but why do people seem to like that more because it's old i think sounds yeah because it's old um, but, so what I did is I put I, the like, compensated saddles on it. Yeah. So you still have less like mo- room. You have to do two strings at a time, but they're at different points. So it, it 
ends up working better. Like your intonation is easier to set. It's yeah. easier than uh, the traditional three. I'm saying. Oh right, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You can't. It, it's like, easier when they each have their individual thing. Well, I'm right? saying the compensated saddles. Even if you have the three compensated saddles, it's still better than the original three saddles. Oh, tell me why. Because, because they, I feel like they have notches in them, so the strings hit know. at he's different just, points. He's, you're both saying the same thing. Having the compensated saddles is better than not having the compensated saddles. But he thinks I'm saying the six no, saddles Phil, is better than three. Don't tell me yes. what I think you're saying. <laughs> I'll tell you what I think you're that saying. That is what you thought I was saying at first. No. Yes. What well, no, he was I'm asking talking about... if you were saying that. Phil is saying that either one of those <laughs> options is not <laughs> is not better than the six saddles by themselves. Is that not what yes. you're saying, Phil? What I am saying is explain to me why in any situation it is easier to uh, adjust the intonation with multiple strings at a time. Why I never said easier? it was. What I said is that... Okay. So yeah. you have... There's three but options. I will explain there's to here. you that there's only three screws to adjust instead of six. So that is inherently easier. That is true. And yes, the intonation but is pretty much set. I mean, look at a mastery bridge. It only has two saddles. Like there's yes. three strings on two saddles. Have you yes. ever noticed that, Phil? I have noticed, and what I've wondered is if I put a mastery bridge on well, a it's designed guitar, like with the ratio. Well, no, it mind. has two adjustment screws for each saddle. That's why, so you can adjust the pitch of it. Oh, but it does. the idea is that if you have like, the, oh, so the it has four screws. The intonation offset is kind of a known quantity, unless you have really yeah, that's weird what I'm gauges. Saying. Like so. I mean, you think about a. There are some bridges that don't have any intonation adjustment. It's just built in, you know. Like yes, rap, but so like I'm, not that any, I'm not saying that any. I'm not saying that any three saddle setup is better than or more accurate than a six saddle setup. I'm saying that a compensated three saddle setup, or is better than a standard three. Yes. And if you're talking about like usability and adjustability then yes, six saddles is inherently better than three if you really want to fine-tune things. But there are different issues you run into with six saddle bridges, like, um, you know, sometimes the your string spacing, uh, like if the saddles shift around mm. at all, there can be issues. Sometimes the saddles get off. Like if you don't set it up right, you know, each each one of the six saddles has two height adjustment screws. And if you don't set it up right, one of the saddles can end up being crooked to where you don't have like good solid contact on one of the screws. And so, I mean, there's, there's potential issues with it. And, and as far as setup, like ease of setup, a three saddle bridge is, is much easier to set up than, cause you only have four height adjustment screws and two, like a, a, a intonation adjustment screws or three, sorry. Yeah. So you have three. six height adjustment screws and three intonation screws. I guess. I mean, no. What do you I, guess? I, <laughs> well, I know it's like, easier. There's ease easier and then there's like, there's tweakability. Six saddles yes, gives exactly. you more tweaks. Three saddles is easier. Yes, exactly. Here's, here, it, and, and I've never done it before. Or I've never had a we'll guitar simpler. with, I've never had a guitar with the three mm -hmm. piece thing. Mm -hmm. But I feel like if I'm, if I'm adjusting one, then I'm unadjusting the other. But that's because you're assuming my fear. that they haven't already thought that out. Like you're adjusting the, them in tandem. The compensation on the saddle is accounts for the difference in intonation. Yeah, that's why. That's what I was saying. The, the compensated ones do. Have you seen the compensated saddles? Do you mean where, where it's like there's like a and where the each string an hits at different points? Yeah. Yes. So there's the one barrel, and then they. They're like offset. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I, I do know what you are referring to. Okay. Okay. So if you set the so that, on one string. that distance between those two points is like intentionally set. Yes. It's by design. So it ends up putting both strings in intonation or they're either both that, you know, they might both be slightly off. So yes, but, but then it, like intonation is a myth. Like you can't have, there's no such thing as perfect <laughs> intonation. Like okay. Right, which is why they make perfect, all those weird fretted guitars. Yeah, that's why they have compensated fret guitars or uh, 
true what are they called so, true temperament i guess yeah. here's my question and please don't yell at me both at the same time if this is one of those things phil that... shut up <laughs> oh okay, good, go for good for you good for you i want to go listen to that now go ahead phil, go go <laughs> say what you're phil would you just say why, it already why if if it's already set then why not have two barrels with three strings each or one barrel well, that's what with mastery does. six strings each? Well, the one barrel with six strings each is like a wraparound bridge. Yep. Like those exist. You're saying that as if it's a ridiculous idea, but they exist. <laughs> why don't all guitars have it? Because guitars are different. Why don't all guitars have single coil pickups? I don't know. Like, well, uh, No, like... One is not... There, as a there thing. There trade-offs, like... Yeah, like every and the trade offs are everyone has its benefits like and maybe you want so weird you kind of have to decide. Like, like maybe you want weird uh like okay, so with two strings, with a two saddle bridge, you can you can get the string height exactly where you want it for both strings. But as soon as you go past that, then you have to take into account the fretboard radius. So like a mastery bridge has to account for the fretboard radius, as does a tunematic bridge, for example. Mm. And that's why tunematic bridges don't necessarily work on Fender guitars, or that's you know people say, oh, that's the problem with a J Mascus Jazzmaster because it has a tunematic bridge, which is built for a twelve inch radius, and the neck has a nine and a half inch radius. And so that's one of the downsides of having less saddles is less adjustment points, I guess, less tweakability, but. Less less tweakability also means that it's easier to set up, or that it's simpler to set up. So it depends what you're looking for. I mean, some people want simplicity, and some people want tweakability. That's true. Well, I like the three you, saddles. I like my that. compensated saddles. Yeah, I really like. That's what I have on my Jazzcaster too. And if they made a good one for American Standard. The, the problem, like, the bridges are completely different. The three saddle bridges, um, mm. like, the holes for the strings uh. are behind the screws. Uh huh. And on the oh, six saddle yeah, bridges, yeah. they're in front of the screws. Like yeah, because they have to go, like, straight through the saddle yeah. instead of around the saddle. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind I of weird. I never even thought about that. So, there's so not you can't like, just switch out saddles. You have to get a new bridge. You have to get a complete new bridge. And you have to get like a weird bridge. Like you have to get some, you know, they made this special bridge that's like an, a, you know, hmm. an adapter bridge or whatever, basically. So if you do string through like top loading, you necessarily have to have a three saddle setup? Or can, uh, do they have like six saddles yeah, set up? because... Not really, because the string, like the string, would need to go through the same hole that the that the adjustment screw goes through. You know. Oh yeah, because it'd be like so not, straight, or it would have to yeah. be like like a P base kind of setup. No, because P bases only have two saddles. Do they? Oh, oh no, it's offset. Oh yeah, so they do actually. Yeah, make... the screws just don't go down the middle; they go like on the side of the yeah. saddle. Which they make for a while. That's what the American Strats had. Like the American mm. Deluxe Strats mm. had these weird little offset. So they're like little barrels, but there's six of them. Exactly. And the and this, the screw comes up the side. Yeah, that's weird. It is weird. Crazy. So. Well, this episode crazy weird. Did that with our saddle talk. Without us yelling at you. You got really close. Saddle Talk is brought to you by the Gabriel Tenorio String Company. No, it's I want to say Phil screwed you for saying I got really close. What? Why? Now you we didn't yell at you at all. <laughs> yeah, we didn't like yell at you at all, and I made valid points for why there's differences. Yeah, you did. I don't did. know what more you wanted. Nothing. It was wonderful. I'm so glad that you didn't yell at me. Man. So and you, you should have said it was excellent, and all you said is it was very good. It was <laughs> close. <laughs> yeah, you gave it like a 6.5 out of 10, basically. You started at six, actually, and you upgraded it to six point five after <laughs> further thought. Because I washed up. Okay, what are you saying? Mm. 
Um, I was talking uh, about the Gabriel Turner String Company and oh, yeah. the strings mm-hmm. that they make for all your saddles. In fact, here's something cool. Gabrielle actually does different twist lengths at the end, so whatever your setup is, you get the perfect strings for your guitar. So he makes different, like most companies, you know, same strings. He makes different strings for wraparound bridge, for like a string through telly, top loader, uh, jazz master, or offset kind of trem, Bigsby. Uh, what else do you have? Like a tunematic, whatever you got, stop tail. He has the perfect strings for you. Would he call me an idiot if I said, do you have a different set of strings for my uh, six individual saddles as opposed to a probably not saddle. to your face not to my face <laughs> yeah because that wouldn't really make any difference but it i, I don't the think the length of the string that's not the most idiotic question that any of us has asked though it's not a that's true i mean yeah. any of us that's not the most idiotic thing you've said today on this podcast <laughs> phil <laughs> Today. <laughs> I'm paying you a compliment. Uh, that was a compliment, right? I mean, yeah, how am I the bad guy? So here? nice. How am I the bad yeah. guy? <laughs> yeah. You're at a you're at a reasonable volume, which is more than I'm being nice I could ever right ask now. for. <laughs> okay, I have two things we could talk about. Okay, I'm looking forward to them. M- maybe one of them should wait for some other time. We'll just do one, and we'll see how it goes. Well, no, I'm going to let you choose. So there's the story of musical, my most recent musical terrorism, and then there's also uh, talking about the voice live, various voice live options. Why don't you just combine those two things? Well, they're different, but yet related. We'll talk about mm, them oh. together. Okay, so uh, musical terrorist um, event was. At this, at the time that our viewers are hearing this, it's probably been a couple weeks. But um, at the uh, my mo- most recent show, I made the sound guy walk out in disgust. <laughs> that's <laughs> what. That's that's the thesis statement. <laughs> I didn't. Did you know this, Aaron? No, this is news to me. Did I? I didn't tell you guys. What? That, that's what happened. Okay, so. So we ended our set with um, the infamous song "Party Rock Anthem," and uh, what song is that? Party Rock uh, is in the, in the house, house tonight. tonight. Yeah, that's one. Okay. So the song wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah. No, that's a different one. Are you sure? That's yes. Are you it sure? Works. Aaron, normally. I I'm always up for arguing with Phil, but I think I think he might have you might be out of your element on this one. All right, I think Phil knows so, more about trash. You're music right. Than you. You're right. It's sexy, <laughs> and I know it. Yeah, which yeah, I'm not I'm not willing to do that song. But here's the thing. So in the song ends with uh, uh, the voice uh, voice saying, "Get up, get down, put your hands up to the sound." A right? voice, and then, like a disembodied voice. Eh, it's just some. It's some girl voice, so it's not even. One oh, of I the thought singers. you meant so, like when you perform it. <laughs> uh-huh. I hear so, you. I was like, just a voice. I was wondering so, why you're calling him out on that. Like he's. It's <laughs> a normal thing to say. No, I was like confused. I was like, what do you mean? Yeah, I know. It's so confusing. I hear what you're okay, saying. so, so okay, Phil. Next time you get confused with something simple, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Phil, why are you yeah. always so hard on Aaron? And you get Aaron? super pissed. You're always so hard on Aaron, <laughs> Phil. <laughs> so hard on Aaron. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So. Go on. So the the line is. So <laughs> I'm just kidding. So I'm she starts repeating. Um, Put your hands up to the sound. Put your hands up to the sound. Mm-hmm. So I said to uh, my partner in crime. Wouldn't it be funny if I just keep saying it until everyone in the venue puts their hands up? <laughs> no. And then I'm, at first I'm singing it, but then I just start like just begging them, please put your hands up. Everybody put your hands up. Like and we laughed about it. We laughed about it. And anytime that we make each other laugh, then I try to implement that in the show. So I'm doing it and we're going where it's it was probably four minutes of me saying what come on everybody put your hands up 
It's so awful. And here's the so thing. Tell us more about the context of where this is happening. It's the, the, it was it's a coffee shop in um what percentage a small, what percentage of the people are there to get coffee to, and what percentage are to there see to us your band? Okay. It's statistically insignificant, I would say. Okay. <laughs> so the I'm number looking, of people so, that are there to watch his band play? Yes. Yes, less than one so, <laughs> between zero and one. There Okay, there were What's the over under? <laughs> over under? <laughs> Wait a second. Twenty seven. <laughs> I'll take the under. <laughs> no, it was um there were maybe twenty people there to see us and maybe ten people there that had no idea who we were. Oh, that's not bad. That's a good ratio. That is <laughs> at a coffee shop. That's like unheard of. Wait, what? How? There like that's a lot people of people there to, to see, see you? you out of thirty at a coffee shop. Wait, your 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 mind is boggled that there were twenty people there to see us at a yes. coffee shop. Yeah, is yours not, Aaron? No, it to is. See I'm your with you. Musical terrorism. My band plays so, good music, and we get like two people to come see us. Really? Because like last time, I we we had more people than that. I could not. We've be had more angry than I am right now, Phil. I, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm filled with envy cool. and rage. Cool. Here's the thing. First of all, uh, there there's a small percentage of people who I don't know why, but they very much enjoy the terrorist part of the musical terrorism. Yeah. The, it's small. They're Yeah. They're bad people. Those people they're are gluttons bad. for punishment. They're bad, they're glutton, bad no, people. It's like, it's like bad, bad, bad people, bad people. <laughs> yeah, but it's like it, it is funny. Like if that's the gimmick, it's like a comic who's intentionally awkward, and you know, it's like yes, it's like Nathan that is for exactly you. what's happening. Like, but not that you're as funny as Nathan for you, but it's. And if you want to talk about, if you want to continue talking about numbers, we can. But I don't. I'd, I'd prefer I'm, to get back to it is hurting to the sound me guy to my core to talk about numbers. So let's get back to okay. the sound guy. So. I'm I'll yelling. just say twenty people is not a lot, but it's a no, lot at a coffee but the shop. Ratio, the yeah. ratio too is like because yes. what I was thinking is you're in you're uh, assaulting, orally assaulting all of these people, just like random people, just trying to mind their own business and drink their coffee. But from the sounds of it, that is not the case. You're actually yeah. putting butts in seats. Yeah, and, that was right. my assumption too. I and apologize. there are so, even some of those who like enjoy that you are going to try to uh, annoy them intentionally. Well, you you both have seen my my ag- aggressive yes. uh, marketing. Not so. only that, but I've seen your music, and I will admit that like <laughs> it is good, like it is entertaining music. Yeah, it's not. It's good in the sense that you sing on key and you sing well and you play guitar well, and so it's not. There's oh, nothing like you. musically offensive about any of it. Cole, that's the nicest thing only, you've ever said about only me. Only in the sense that the music that you choose to play. I've said way nicer things about you, by the way. But yeah, yeah so now that it's competition. Yeah. But if it was, I would win. <laughs> if this turns into a competition, if we can say the nicest thing to Phil, that's going to change the, the dynamic pretty significantly. I think very, very much so. <laughs> but but yes, like I I'm not I'm not surprised because like the there's a gimmick with your stuff, but you execute it well. Like it's one thing to have to play songs that are kind of dumb and don't fit this style, but if you don't do a good job of it, then it's just not going to be good to watch. So okay, okay. So all, all right. that being anyway. said, it's still it's still annoying. So you're doing this for you're four doing. minutes, and then so what? for that so for a four really minutes, really long time. You're right, and I kept looking at, at down at Kyle, and he's smiling because he knows like I'm not I'm like we said okay we'll just keep going and. You're, you're and both. so I'm looking around, and I get, I get buy-in from the people who are there to see us pretty quickly, right? In that, but they then put the rest their of hands it, up? yes, okay. But then the rest of it was trying to get the attention of people in other parts of the coffee shop who are actively. Be- it's like a, it's like a homeless person yelling at you, and you're just trying <laughs> yes. to walk yes. down the street. Yes, like, except I'll, I'll be happy if I get out of this without getting stabbed is what they're thinking. Except <laughs> yeah, except think if that homeless person 
had 20 people with him. <laughs> all cronies. All like, yeah, all, all Cro- cronies? giving a... What's a homeless a, crony? Is it a cromie? A cromie, yeah. Okay. All, all putting Honey. like this this peer pressure. <laughs> Honey, no. Brony. Brony. No. Brony. Honey, cromie. Wait, <laughs> define homeless crony. I don't. I, I mean, we can't put all our jokes under a microscope, Aaron. Yeah. Because um, I'm not 100% sure what a crony is. Just like a little like, toady, like a little follower. Okay. Yeah, a follower. Then I'm with you. Um, so so there, are like, there was a couple groups of people. There was one couple that looked crony like... Crony 2012. Like a, a friend. <laughs> it looked like it was like maybe a first date. And then there was um, a group of four um, middle-aged people that were talking, uh, and um, and so I had to like individually yell at them <laughs> and get their attention. And they looked, they turned and looked at me like very confused because they were Are like you a very far away. Professional or not? And and they're looking at me and like me, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you, you, put your hands up. And then they like, that's terrible. Like kind of like confused, like put their hands up. And I'm like, yeah. And then everybody that's like part of that is there to see us, they're like cheering because more people are putting their hands up. I fully support it up to that point that like you you get the person's attention and you say, put your hands up and either they do it or they don't. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's so I'm still on board with you. So Okay. So so I get so I so then there's this table in the very back and they're talking and I go, hey. Hey you! And I'm still playing, right? I'm like, hey, hey, you guys, you! And then one of them finally turns and looks at me, and I go, "What are you talking about?" And they look oh. confused, and and then they go, well, "We were just you talking about me. what we were going to eat." You lost me with the "What are you talking about?" <laughs> what 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 are, what are we going to eat? And I go, "Oh, cool! Could you put your hands up, please?" And then they they kind of like slowly put their hands up, and I go, "Okay, awesome!" And then it's just the one guy. It's the sound guy who. <laughs> is no longer at the board. He's sitting in the back by himself on his phone. So then, and I've been screaming at everyone. It's four minutes, like right? He, and He has some investment in this show. Like he, Yes, and he, he's sitting on his phone, and I go, hey, sound guy. Ev- now, and at this point, everyone in the place is staring at him because they all know that this is, I'm not stopping until everybody puts their hands up. So I go, hey, sound guy. And everybody is looking at him, and I go, put your hands up. And he doesn't look up. He's looking at his phone. I go, come on. Come on, please. You're the last one. Please put your hands up. And he stands up and walks out. (laughs) I love it. He's my favorite person. (laughs) And then I look at Kyle and I go, okay, I guess that's it. (laughs) I am 100% on his side. First of all, he gave um, you what you wanted. Yes. Because then everyone in there had put their hands up. Yes, exactly. I was like, okay, we have achieved our goal. Everyone, everyone okay. put their hands up. I'm going to say I'm... To the sound. I'm on his side as well, but I'm also 100% on your side. Yeah, th- there's no bad side here. Like, I'm totally on with board with everything that you did in that scenario. All and sides. I am shocked to be saying this, but that is... Like, that sounds like a ton of fun. And I bet all the people who had their hands up at first and then that were cheering as other randos started putting their hands up we're just thrilled with it you know yes exactly they're all like they all become complicit yeah, and they're yeah. like they're yeah and they're all like yes you socialize them and now they're all part of your terrorist gang <laughs> yeah you, but see yeah this is this is the same them. kind of bit as me yelling at the person who came in to buy a drink a li- that well, you guys when when no, you guys called this, me a musical terrorist this is this the same has kind more of, bit. of a group it has more of like a group buy in and and if yeah like if any one of those people in the group had like shook their head or said no 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 like i'm not into this i would hope that you would have moved on and not continued to harass them i'd like I, to, i'd like to think unfounded. that you would have here's what's weird is i, I think know, that, that there's too much social pressure that hope has no basis to in allow reality. that i mean that dude walked out so exactly that was the thing it was like he was the and <laughs> I just think, but like, I think he, I think he hated everything about. I think you what bullied we were him a little bit, but it's okay. I'm on. I'm with you. I think it was harmless. Unless I think, he's dead now. So, for example, like case. if that last table had just ignored you, or like one person looked up and they're like, "Nah," or "Screw you," or whatever. Yeah. I yeah. would hope that you would have just like been, 
oh, okay, whatever, and moved on, or like, and I don't know that hmm. you would have done that. But up until that point, I'm 100% on board with you. And it sounds like that Thank was a you. lot of fun. Right? <laughs> it it was it was a lot. It was way more fun than I thought. Mainly because I had no idea it would take me four minutes. And also that what it actually would you have worked. done if like, they had ignored nobody you? except the sound guy actually dug in their heels and refused to participate. And that's pretty surprising. See, I think that's a like that's a weird like we're social animals. And I th- I think it it's like, you know, those yeah, those like have you heard those stories of like the like the social experiments where they go, hey, do you smell smoke? And then all the there's a bunch of people in the room. They go, no. And there's one person, it's like everybody is a paid actor to say, I don't smell smoke. And then the one person's going, no, seriously, oh, there is do you smell smoke? smoke? I smell smoke. There is smoke. And then and everybody's going, no, I don't smell it. And then the person just sits down <laughs> and like doesn't, <laughs> like, doesn't leave or I'm investigate. I'm having a stroke right now. So yeah, exactly. Call 911 so for me. it's like some small percentage of people who, who will like insist yeah. And most people but, will like, but at the same time, like when it started, like the ratio isn't everyone and one person not on board at the beginning. It was, you know, we have these lunatics up here watching this guy play. And if I was the but, first person who wasn't there to watch you play, I could see that being a higher probability of just being like, no, I'm not into it. Like go, go to the next guy. I know, but, but because it's like 20 ish people who like very quickly, they, they, they came to see us and they know that we're going to do stupid things like that. Yeah, and, and they, they know that there's going to be like some egging, like they're in on the fact that it's stupid yes. and that it's going to be. And they're like, "Come on, come on!" And they're yes. So then it, it's not it's not just two weirdos trying to turn a room. It really very quickly becomes twenty weirdos trying to turn a few people. I don't like how you see this what I'm Story saying? has changed my perspective on your music, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just like I still feel the same way that I always felt. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> that's even better. Like that story was completely different than I thought it would be when you started it with, I made the sound guy walk out. <laughs> like I'm, I'm a hundred percent on board with the sound guy and what he did. He made the right decision, but also like <laughs> it was kind of the jerky thing, you know, like it would have been pretty easy to just put his hands up and does know. it make it funnier not, not jerky, or less but... funny that the sound guy looked like he could totally kick my ass. Here's the thing. It's like there's so many other <laughs> I find that every, better ways that, makes that people it funnier could have to reacted me. to you, and I feel like they all just kind of rolled over, and I'm annoyed at them for that. Oh, so you're saying Like the people at the table, when you said, what are you talking about, and they, they were like, ignored you, and they said, no, what are you talking about, they should have said something like, your mom or something, you know? Like, they should have had a yeah, comeback. I... That's one part I do not appreciate you asking them what they're talking about. That's not that's none of your business, Phil. Oh, that's none of your business. Answer. Okay, yeah. I I could that's fine, but you you have the right to say none of your business. Right? No, Here's the thing. Sometimes the crowd participation stuff sometimes the crowd yeah. participation stuff gets you put uh, in a sitch. goes south. Oh, you don't and say. And I just have to work <laughs> with it. So like a few shows ago <clears throat> um we did an Usher song that is like uh, sexually Deed. explicit, Deed. and I told I told the crowd this is a uh, this is a family venue, so um, I'm going to replace any uh, I'm going to cut out all the the bad you know the inappropriate words or phrases, but I need something to replace it with. So so tell me out in the crowd, just somebody give me give me a word to uh, replace the replace it with. And this guy, who's a friend of mine, granted he's a friend of mine, mine, but he was doing it to mess with me intentionally. He screams, failure! <laughs> and then it was quiet, and then I go, okay. So <laughs> so then I sang the Usher song and replaced all the inappropriate words and phrases the with the word fit? failure. <laughs> no, I'm they, guessing they, a lot of sometimes, the words were single syllables, right? Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it fit, and sometimes it didn't, but... It was funny. That is very. And, that is a very funny response to that. Um, so like, just not just just by virtue of the fact that he didn't say dildo, which is like the absolute <laughs> yeah, most hacky, right. like in every improv show ever. I need a word for this. That's like the one thing that 
people answer, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's you're right. He could have really like doubled down. Ooh. Never yeah. Mind. So yeah, that's Yeah, this I mean my whole world view is changing before your eyes. 20 people. <laughs> and then you got all those Not people dude. On board. And the funny, I, like the funny part, like it actually adds humor that the sound guy walked out because ostensibly he's like, he has to be there. He's like doing his job and his job is directly related to your music that you're doing. <laughs> he's like the one person who shouldn't be walking out. Who has yeah, like, he's implicit. He's like out. a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Like he, he's yeah, exactly. He's like the guy who supplied the bombs, you know? <laughs> Like supplied the you know vest or whatever that you tie all the pipe bombs to. Here's what's interesting to me about this whole scenario. I'm not entirely mm-hmm. unconvinced that part of the reason, at least part of the reason that Cole is on board, is because he knows you had 20 people there. Like I it's think only a numbers thing. For I him? think part of it. I think that <laughs> knowing you had that many people made him respect your band more. <laughs> And therefore made him more willing to accept your terrorism. No, Do you, well, okay, no. Tell me this. Fact, it's because it changes the context of the terrorism. Like, well, that's it's, true. It's very yes, different because if people know a, what they're getting into. If you're in a coffee shop and none of the people are there to see you, but some of them are like, oh, I'll, I'll yeah, stick around true. to see this guy I've never heard of. And he starts telling us to put our hands up. It's, yeah, you're starting from zero. And that's very hard. Yes. to get That ball rolling. But the fact that. <laughs> right. That's true. You're like, that's true. Like you're so, an odd man out at that point, so it's not. I mean, so it's, it's more a percentage. So you're saying, thing. so you're saying you assumed that all the times that we play, that we're playing to mostly people that don't know us. That's how coffee shop music goes. That and has also, never been. That was my experience one time, but because of my aggressive advertising campaigns, it's. This is really hurting. Mo- you're you're. Sometimes I say hurtful things to you, but I don't mean them to be hurtful. I don't, I'm not like trying to hurt you, but this is actually hurting me because the reason that I thought that is probably because that's how my band is. Like we're only playing to people who happen to be at that bar. Like nobody came to see us specifically unless it was one of our wives or something. But it's different because you're doing like house music for the bar and Phil's yes. like throwing shows. Yeah, that's true. In yeah. like yes, a coffee shop. It's not. He's like, not the coffee it's shop. It's understood music. that that bar is going to have like a band yes. that night, and and yeah. the name is our band name is out on the marquee and stuff like that. The owner of the venue said to me after his sound guy walked out, he said, "Hey, don't take this wrong." But you guys are the weirdest band that we have here. You're like, and that's I, the greatest. I want to do a Halloween party. Me. <laughs> exactly, and we're doing a Halloween party, and I, I, I think it makes more sense for it to be a weird band. So, do you guys want to play the Halloween party? And I was like, I we will check with our wives. <laughs> you said, Thank you for did you start. Did you start tearing up? Did you say <laughs> I do not? No, it was like one of those where. where but I you ask say, you for offering. <laughs> <laughs> no you like say uh yes it'd be our pleasure and then you walk away and it's like the shot of you walking away so he can't see you and you're like yes <laughs> tears are streaming down your face and stuff and then it's it freezes freeze frame yeah, on yeah, you judd nelson fist freezes yeah. as you jump up and put your fist up in the air did you have Don't a bandana you... tied around your ankle forget For about me <laughs> Dun, 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 no, dun. I, I get what you're saying, Aaron, that like having that many people there lends some legitimacy to his music in general, but it also drastically changes the. Yeah, I just the, wish the, I would have the had heard you react to that story without that bit of information and seen how like different the reaction was. Oh, yeah. If I thought he was starting from scratch <laughs> and like yelling at people to put their hands up who were just there to try and get a cup of coffee and, and and like not talk to anyone then yeah that's very different but but then okay but then doesn't that make it see in my mind and maybe this is where i differ from <laughs> the two of you in my mind that makes it even cooler that if i got if i got a room but full you of have. strangers to convince if i convinced a room full of strangers to put their hands but up but you wouldn't i don't think you would have 
Okay. And also, it would have been like much if you more did, like yeah, that would be an achievement. But I don't think you would have because you would have like there's no pressure at that point. Uh, yeah, 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 you're right. And also, that's so, like saying I I wouldn't stop calling this girl, and she begged me to stop bothering her, and then finally she agreed to go on a date with me. Like, mm-hmm. isn't that cooler than if she just agreed to go on a date with me the first time? It's like absolutely not. Mm-hmm. Like you just broke her <laughs> down. Like you you victimized her. That is right. That no. is true. Like you, that's no. what you would have been doing to those people. Like you would have been shaming them into raising their hands up, or at least like, okay, maybe if I put my hands up, he'll shut up. I still kind of feel like I would victimize people because it was four minutes long. I feel like you did. I feel like you went out and got yes, sixty-five of your definitely. friends to write a letter that say, "Phil's funny." You put your hands up, and then the other people <laughs> put their hands up. <laughs> That's what it feels like. <laughs> but here's the thing. Uh-huh. Here, I would have to. I would have to like question everything we do. If you should, if if we had people show up to a show and then never show up to another show. <laughs> but that's not the case. People can continue coming to our shows true because not because i'm a good musician or a good singer i think it's specifically for the terrorism it's not so much for the music okay but here's i don't think all the people came just because so they knew you were going to do something dumb at the last four minutes i mean maybe but no but the whole set is a combination of the two there's lots of dumb in the set but yeah but i'm saying not all of it is terrorism like being dumb a lot of the things that you do are like funky and weird but they're not like actively antagonizing people yeah, I mean, okay, that's true. But, okay, yes. But also, if your music wasn't good, then they wouldn't come. Right. Like, even if that's just checking the box, like, it has, you have to have both of those elements. Even if, like, Weird Al, people go to his show because of the jokes and because it's funny, but if he wasn't good at singing and playing music, then they wouldn't, you know? Uh, yeah, okay, I yes. So, but I'm saying... I, Cole, I think you are a better singer and a better musician than me. But I, but I make it f- like oh, totally. No, that's like that's why I'm I'm people. I mean, the, it's like that. The difference is it's like I'm part of the is, When Andy starts playing at at kids' birthday parties, and it's like, well, that's way more fun than playing mouse rat songs, you know, and more people, <laughs> and it's more enjoyable. Like people. People want to laugh and have fun more often than they want to listen to good music, probably. Yes, or like, yes. Or like mediocre. That's the other thing. Well, I don't know. Yes, I, I get I get what you're saying. I don't necessarily agree with the premise that I'm a better musician than you, but I get what you're saying. But I think there's an inherent uh, appeal to the fun aspects of what you're doing or the weirdness. But I do think there are people who... There, I know there are people who have, who know me, and they're like, "Oh, okay, I'll go to Phil's show," and they go and they're like, "Ugh, this is gross." <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, ever totally. want to. I never want to go see him play again. But but there are, there are, there are lots there are lots of people who are like, "Tell me when you're playing again," <laughs> because yeah, totally they and enjoy the awkward, like the people who said. That's gross. If you had just played straight up covers of songs and nothing else, they wouldn't have said that's gross, but they also would have never come right. back to see you either. So like, <laughs> you know what I'm that saying? That might be true. Like that they're not going to keep coming out to see you play, you know, bad baby songs or whatever, like regardless of how good you are or the the that vast be, majority of them won't. That would be a funny bit. Playing a bad just, baby song. No, to do like an entire. Oh, yes. Now tonight. Now it would be tonight. I'm going to do the the all of the songs are by the performer Bad Baby. And you just just do just straight through. Well, yeah, it's like the same joke of when Norm Macdonald went on the roast and he just told like really old fashioned, you know, dad jokes or whatever. 
that weren't really funny and weren't offensive at all because it's like, yeah, you've, you've the opposite of what people have. You guys seen his new net, his Netflix show. Yeah, it's good. I think it's so funny. My wife hates it so much. He had, he had a show just like that for a while. Uh Um, I mean, it was was with that same guy, Adam Egert, I think Uh is his name. Um, but yeah, like on a network somewhere. Yeah, well, it was a podcast. It was like a video podcast uh, when, when that was. Yeah, a thing it's really funny. Did. Um, and you can look up some of the jokes because, like, they'll have them read jokes off of cards for part of the show. They don't do it uh-huh. for very much on this one. Oh, but some of the some of the jokes are so terrible. <laughs> um, but yeah, which it's called. Norm Macdonald has a show. I've only seen the first episode, the David Spade one. Yeah, dude, that one's way good. But it was uh, so Drew, good. Drew Barrymore was on one, and she was really good too. Oh, nice. And David Letterman's was good too, but yeah, it's it's way good. <clears throat> Anyways, you haven't seen it, Cole. I mean, Phil. No, you would probably like. You probably would like. You it. would. You would like. I mean, it, I I've seen. Netflix has told me that I should watch it. Yeah, but it's I like not very yet. subdued show. But it's like it's like comedians talking about comedy, kind of. At least yeah. the one that I watched. But like also really being funny. funny. So that guy who's like the sidekick, uh-huh. he's not he's not a comedian. He's actually the booker or maybe he's he's like the owner or the manager or something for the comedy mm. store, which is like this big in L.A., this place where they do improv and stand up and stuff. And so he knows tons of people, but he's not a comedian at all. And so he's like a great straight man, you know, and he's like a, he's like a super nice I've heard Norm Macdonald talk about him before. He's just like a super nice guy that doesn't have a mean bone in his body. And so uh, it's pretty hilarious when Norm Macdonald just picks on him and he can't like say anything terrible back to him or anything. So yeah, it's, it's a good, it's a good dynamic for sure. That's all. Do you want to talk about a pedal? Yeah. Uh, We should mention that this episode, wait, what? I'm sorry. What, what just happened? Mention? Oh, what? <laughs> I was going to say we should talk, mention our sponsors. Yeah, go for it. Gunshoe Wiring Company. They're great. They make wires. They're for the wires um, inside of your guitar. Inside your guitar, yeah. They uh, custom wiring harnesses. Three styles, actually. 50s, modern, and something else. Blend? Hybrid? Like um, so that. you can get like old fashioned kind of darker sound or like a more modern, brighter sound or something in the middle. Uh, it has something to do with the way the volume pot less, rolls off. Is that specifically for Les Paul wiring? I think it's for everything. I think it has to do with the volume pot specifically where one of them. So the 50s style one, when you roll off the volume, it's supposed, I think it stays bright or something. And then the modern one, when you roll the volume down, it loses tone. And then the hybrid fixes something. I don't know. I don't really fully understand, but there are. It's like a subtle difference in the way the volume pot affects the tone. So, hmm. the yes, I'm trying to remember because because the 50 style wiring is a specific thing on Les Pauls. Yeah, it's um, based off of that, but they use the same kind of concept in everything. I think now. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Did I okay, say Gun Street yeah, Wiring Company last time? It's Gun Street Wiring Shop. I apologize. Mm. Oh, crap. We're going to have to give back our sponsorship money for that episode now. We're going to have to hashtag no spawn. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag respawn. <laughs> what? And uh, so those are the wires inside of your guitar. What about the wires outside of your guitar? Uh, well, we also use sinusoid cables exclusively here at the Gear Slum. I'm recording through a... Uh, 10 foot XLR cable with rainbow tech flex oh, at the nice. moment. Hmm. A boo. And like, a I'm a uh, bow. B O W. It's the rain boo bow. Rain boo bow. <laughs> That's so much better. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't get there. I'm, uh, I'm recording through a black with red tech flex. 15. They actually oh, made also special. something I invented. They also I'm made just a kidding. Special, I don't have black with red. I like red with black. sword hat for Phil to wear, and his mic plugs right into the front of the brim. 
I wish they had that. And then what about the wires that are like attached to your guitar but still on the outside? For that, I use yeah, the Gabriel Tornado String Company. Oh, okay. Exclusively. Yeah, Again, exclusive partners your, with the Gear Slum. All your wires covered. From wire to wire. The official string sponsor of the Gear Slum podcast. Yes. Okay, so I actually have a pedal that was... I don't want to give too much away about it, but it it was announced recently. Uh-huh. And it looks really cool. So... I'm going to see if you can guess. I mean, oh, okay. It was just announced. And so I was like, is that your whole segment? (laughs) I have something to talk about, but I don't want to give you any details. All right, let's move on. (laughs) Thanks for friendship. (laughs) Okay. So it's pink. It's okay. uh, The majority of it is pink. Kind of like a hot, like a DM two pink, but it has black text on it. I should be just in the interest of full disclosure. The foot switches are silver. Foot switch. Is this the art Vandalay? No. Okay, go on. <laughs> now I'm going to find a different one. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Was it? Um, no, it isn't. Uh-huh. Um, the, so, okay, so it's all analog. Okay. Octave, boost, and fuzz pedal. Hmm. So it has a fuzz circuit that has level, and then it has a treble, mid, and bass. So it's like a, you know, three-band EQ. And just yeah. a level on the fuzz. Then it has what they call an ugly switch, hmm. which makes the octave all crazy and whatnot. So let's see here. It's so it says it's an all in one fuzz machine for punk, comma, rock. So not punk rock, but punk and rock and or rock. Metal, hmm. stoner, doom, indie, blues. Grunge and many more. It seems like they're trying to cast too wide a net here, but is this from um, Nexi? No. <laughs> Just kidding. Is this from Remember Nexi? Thorpey? Oh, Nexi. <laughs> yeah, this is <laughs> No, this is actually just the adapter plate that I'm talking about. <laughs> it has a built in fuzz. It's wild, huh? Like why it's would crazy. you want that? Put that so on it's like pink. a chorus or something? It's got a fuzz and overdrive, you said? Yeah. And what do the foot switches do? The foot switches, there's three foot switches. One of them says fuzz. One okay. of them is boost. Mm. And one is octave. So they're like independent on off switches. Yes, exactly. So you have. Mm. Man, I don't even want to think how many options you have. Nine? Um, ten? Is it ten? Probably. I don't know. So it's a so it has a discrete octave with high gain ugly switch, a fixed gain transistor boost with a level control. Um, so it's just a clean boost. Well, I don't know if huh. it's clean, but it's fixed gain, and a hybrid silicon germanium fuzz design with a three band tone stack for a smooth amp like response. It has a buffer. It doesn't look like it has any like octave controls. Hmm. It's just like, kind of on. It doesn't even say like if it's an octave up or an octave down. It's probably like an analog yeah. octave where it's just like almost like a ring mod kind of thing. Maybe so, yeah. But it looks pretty cool. And it is two hundred and fifty dollars. Two hundred and fifty. Is it that new um oh, the Seymour Duncan one? No, that's a good guess, though. It's wrong, but it is a good guess. <laughs> it is. Do you have any I guesses? I have no idea. Still? Sounds cool. Um, huh? I want to say Thorpey some more. I've only ever. <laughs> yeah, it's not Thorpey. <laughs> the Thorpey. Fuzz Octave. Thorpey Fuzz. It's the Fuzz. It's the Fuzz Booth. B O O. It's the Fuzz Booth. B O O T H T. It's the Thorpey. Thorpe <laughs> booth. <laughs> um, so it's from a it's company a, called it's Damnation a Audio. Have you guys heard of them? No. Nope. I'm about to. Most see about of their them. other pedals are just like very boring looking, and this one <laughs> is honestly pretty boring looking. It's just pink. Um, but it's called the Ugly Twin. Hmm. And, and where did you hear about this? Just on the internet. Nice. I think the link that I saw was for 
Premier Guitar. Mm. PremierGuitar.com is your one-stop shop for all things Premier. guitar culture normalcy. Mm. Uh, I like their yeah. style. It's like the knobs don't quite sponsored. fit in the We're right place. sponsored by Premier Guitar, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like the knobs. <laughs> like They almost look like they're just randomly spaced. Kind of, yeah, haphazardly thrown together. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> So, and it's weird. It's like a total departure. If you look at their other pedals, they're all just black with white text on them. Mm-hmm. And like, they almost look like it's like descriptive text. Yeah. And it looks like they all look like prototypes basically. So it's a weird, I always wonder when companies do that, when they compl- when it's a complete departure from their known style, I guess. But it's interesting. Yeah. I like their, I kind of want to, I like their simple like style. Yeah, two hundred and fifty bucks though. I mean, that's pretty crazy. Um, <laughs> their prices are low, which makes me think they're really small. Because a lot of times, like people as a who company, are, you're saying, yeah, yeah, like setting their, just building it on their own and kind of doing yeah, one off yeah. things. Like it's their price a little bit like, lower. It's almost like they're it's a marketing cost or something. Yeah, and there's like no overhead, or way less overhead. Anyway. It looks cool. Did you listen to it? Have you heard any clips? I couldn't find any clips, but I want to now. And I want to know if anyone out there, because I'd never really heard of Damnation Audio. Oh, there's a it video on their that, website. It could just be like that I just happened to happened upon this one random article and nobody else has ever heard of him either, but I wonder if anyone has any opinions about him. Oh, so the twin and ugly switch does kind of change the character of the octave, I guess. Okay, that makes sense. I I think ugly is just up, and twin also gives you like a sub octave. So, but it sounds cool, and you can run just the boost and the octave, or just the boost, or just the octave, yeah, or all three, or just the fuzz, or keep going, or just the fuzz and the boost, or just the fuzz and the octave, or nothing. Turn them all off too. Yeah, yeah, that's another option you can use. So I think there's seven options. Or eight options if you count off. It's probably nine because it's probably like two, One, two to the three, third power. Four. So it's probably five, eight, and then you add six, no. seven. Because then all eight. off would be an option. I bet it's eight. I think it's eight. Yeah. It's crazy. But then I saw like a linked article on when I was on Premier Guitar. I don't go to mm-hmm. this website ever. Mm-hmm. For just because I don't um, but there is a an article about this nomad pedal board oh I think I've seen that the one with the built in power supply yeah well built in battery basically yeah yeah it's from it Outlaw really Effects cool. which is like a Chinese company I think that does a lot of mini pedals yes hmm. yeah but a company well or it's not a Chinese company maybe but like yeah it's manufactured it's yeah. from outlaw outlaw effects is the company yeah um they're based in montreal but yeah i'm sure it's all manufactured in china yeah cuz they're basically just like those little they're like mini pedals just like everyone else yeah it makes mini pedals but it has a built-in 12000 milliamp hour uh lithium ion battery which is a, i mean you'd get isn't that just 12 amps yeah sure but nobody dude 12 amps you, don't actually list amp you can make hours. so many sounds with 12 amps 12 amp hours it's not 12 amps amp hours that's what it is that's <laughs> how you measure the capacity of a battery okay <laughs> it's amp milli hours 12,000 amp milli hours milli um, so 12 million hours million yeah yes, million exactly Oh my gosh, you guys. Here's the thing. I think it's really cool, but the spacing of the bars is weird. Yes. The whole... Mm, whole... Because the two middle ones are like together. Mm Mm-hmm. It's basically like two nano boards connected. I think I like this. (laughs) Oh, you can just get a single one too. You think you like the board? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess they had to do that. I'm sure that's where the battery lives, right? Between the two. Yeah, that's got to be it. 
Maybe. I don't like it because it, I can't. I feel like, like they it. just only made one design and then just connected it double for the medium instead of the small. But, okay, so. But why don't you like it? I, yeah, why don't you like it, Cole? I, I'm i hesitant to say this, guys, because I don't want people. I've made comments about Top Jacks in the past. <laughs> and my comments were taken out of context, were used to <laughs> slander me, my good name, and it's not fair. All I said was that Top Jacks are not always inherently better, but... Yeah, which is perfectly okay. legitimate. Yes, but in a case like this board, if you picture having two rows of pedals with Top Jacks, then none of the cables would easily feed underneath the board because the slots would end up being right at the middle of the pedal, basically. Right. So that would be my complaint about this. Yeah, board. putting top jacks on the bottom row doesn't make sense. Or the mm. top row, for oh, that matter. Oh, yes. You know, except, I mean... Yeah. If you I mean, want the top the row is to fine because at least the if power you want the cables... the cables to feed under the board, yeah. But yeah, even the, even yeah. the power cables are kind of a pain. Well, guys. here's actually... Now that we're... If we're if we're really talking about using this, that's that is a that is a problem. But also another problem is that the jacks for the power supply power cables yeah. are on the outside. Yeah. And they should be on that middle thick one. Yeah. And here's why. Like, if you drop this if you happen to drop this on the and and it lands on the back end, you've just ruined it. But if the jacks were inside, were on like one of the slots on the inside of it, then they'd be, they would never get potentially smashed. Does that make and sense? Even, yes. And even aside from it's even aside from dropping it, like just putting in it and out of the case, it's those jacks are right. going to yes. get moved around and unplugged and yeah. Like that's not. Yeah, I feel like it's a sacrifice. Like I feel like you would miss, you would lose some ease of use if they were in the middle, especially on the small board. I'm thinking of the small one where they're like, yeah, you end up. I don't know because now they're like underneath all your pedals. But isn't that how your power supply is now? It's not Mm -hmm. like you're constantly unplugging and plugging it back in. Yeah. Unless you're an idiot. Oh, that's weird. I thought that was a USB port, Aaron. Yes. So I feel like the I'm small look, version of this is really one? cool, and I would love to do the small version, but the large one makes no is like yeah, dumb. Yeah, the layout to me. doesn't make sense. Why do? You, what did you think was a USB? So there's a the on one of the pictures it was blurry, but it's what I'm looking at on a better picture is that it's the battery indicator. Oh, I battery? see. Battery. It is a battery. It's Wait, rechargeable. Yeah, it has a battery. That's the whole. Sorry, we kind of glossed over that piece, but yes, it's a battery. That has twelve thousand milliamp hours. Yeah, it's not just a built in amp it's not just a built in power supply, it's a battery. Yeah. So that's the white the white cable oh is what gosh, you plug what? in to charge it, and then it just runs on battery. That's like the whole well Which yes. is why the small one's cool, because it would be like a really good fly rig oh, yeah. kind of thing. And it's battery powered, so you don't even need to run a cable to anything, any power. Dude, this could this is this could revolutionize your musical terrorism, Phil. <laughs> I might l- actually bust. look into buying one of these. I know, dude. They look freaking rad. That's what I'm saying. Like the layout. Like, the, granted, the layout of this of the big one is kind of suspect, but um, the small one oh, it looks like man. Where can you even buy them? The big one's 175 bucks. Which, when you factor in that it's a board and a power supply, isn't that bad? Right. I would. The only thing right. I would question is if it's noisy, because the only times I've used batteries, and granted, they weren't meant to be used as pedal mm. power supplies, but they've always been super noisy. So, so is the one hundred and fifty nine dollar one? Is that the smaller one? It yeah. must be. So the big one's only twenty dollars more. I think Which the battery makes sense because it's just extra I, yeah. metal. The battery doesn't change. I don't think. Yeah, I think the battery is the same on both. Yeah, that small board, that'd be pretty cool. Because what is it? What outputs does it have? It has like four, six hundred milliamp ones, and it comes with a case. Yeah, padded. It's, it's all Chinese padded, made, bro. bro. You can make stuff really cheap in China. 
Oh, word? I don't know if you. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard of that. It has a shoulder strap. It has nearly thirteen hundred milliamp hours. That's so many hours. Thousand eight hundred. It's so many amp hours. Phil can don't, will last over ten hours, hours on a single charge. It says. Which is How a long lot. Are, are your sets longer than 10 hours, Phil? <laughs> they just feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> and, and depending on who you ask. <laughs> hey <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude. Straight up. Like, this... That's it's why pretty this, cool. this caught my eye. And I, and it, I really want to get one. It looks cool. This. I feel like... Who else? Battery... And I think... I well because it's battery powered there's probably not a hard limit on the current draw from each mm -hmm. from each one so yeah so does that mean that if you have less pedals or less draw that the battery lasts longer is that how that works it should yeah, yeah. I don't know how power works because it, it says that says if you're using five pedals yes so that's what that's what okay. milliamp hours means it means it could run 12,000 milliamps for an hour. Uh, That's why it's a measure of capacity. Yeah, you're in. <laughs> <laughs> Phil knew that. Why didn't you know that? You <laughs> idiot. Bastard. So I sold yeah. my, um, my Palmer pocket amp. And I oh. sold my DM2. I don't want to... Just one last thing. It's funny to me because you can select size on their website when you order it. And the two sizes are small and medium. <laughs> there's right. No, yes. There's no okay. large. So you sold your pocket amp and your DM to Waza. Yes. My Waza. Waza. And a, but I bought this thing on Amazon <laughs> and it is called the Pock rock portable oh, guitar effects from. We, we need Moon. to like devote more time to this. Cause we're all yeah. ready. I want to mention it and then hopefully get some stuff for it. So it's like a little battery powered, multi-effects thing with it's like built-in drum pocket, patches right? what basically, would you say yeah. the ideal like what kind of customer is is this like marketed towards someone who likes to market it towards pocket. i don't know i just saw it on amazon is it is it do you think it's for like the like um like a 13 year old like oh i'm gonna get this for my 13 year old who just started playing guitar or is it like oh no. you like playing guitar and you travel for work and so this will be a fun thing to keep in your bag yeah i don't know i think i both. think it's more i don't think there's for, really a difference i think it's for like headphone like just jamming at home yeah just jamming it's <laughs> definitely that to jam it's just jamming headphones when you need to jam something it's a headphone jam jammers. <laughs> okay, so, so when you're headphone practicing in your jammies, does it? Have, oh, right, for your pajamas. So let me tell so you what it has. It has. Amp out. Okay. It has guitar in, amp out, an output. It also has a headphone output. It also has a cab sim offer on. It also has. They actually made it possible for you to plug this into an amp. Yeah, it has a quarter inch it output. It just has an output, yeah. Like there like there are people they are anticipating that people are going to be like the sounds I'm getting out of this thing, Phil, I need them. Not everyone is rich like you and just has a million pedals and amps. It and sounds stuff. pretty good. I mean, you can run it direct if you wanted to. It has it's Swimming basically time. like an amp sim with effects. Here okay, Aaron, here's the ultimate test that you need to okay. do with this thing. The ultimate is plugging it into a PA. Like no amp just guitar into that and then that into a PA. Right. AKA. And, and running and, direct. Um, or just plug it into your DI, like into your. Yeah, I'll just do it in my audio interface. In your DAW. Okay. To my DAW. To your DAW. And, and like, what, what does it, how does it sound with that? Because sometimes it's like when you plug headphone ampy kind of things in and you listen to it and you're like, eh, that's not too bad. But then there's something that changes when you send it out. Holy crap. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking up what? a pocket. So the pocket pod is actually pretty similar. 
and, and okay. everyone's seen those, right? Like the little, it's shaped like a kidney. Yeah, the little bean. Mm-hmm. It's a hundred and thirty dollars new. Aaron's is obviously cool because pod? it's shaped. It's shaped like a guitar. Yeah, pocket pods are so $130. that's thirty dollars. Yes, and also it's thirty dollars on Amazon. Yeah, the pocket <laughs> pod rock. Thirty three ninety nine. And not only that, but they make a they make it in red and black. But the red one, like yeah. everything, is red, including the knobs. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> So it has um it has clean overdrive distortion crunch fuzz and metal settings and then a gain control and a volume control and then it also has like 50 different built-in drum loops that you can like practice with. Can you like adjust Man, the that's tempo cool. or whatever? You cannot adjust the tempo. <laughs> Oh my gosh! So really they're like funny. each. There's a lot of them that are like similar, but at different tempos. That's pretty. Funny. Play with this beat. Deal with it. Sorry, that's the beat, man. And then it has um. So it has like a an echo, delay, reverb control, and then a mod control. So you can choose delay, they should echo call it, room, or hall, and then chorus, flanger, phaser, or tremolo. And you have they this. Should, you have this. They should in say your possession. It's yeah. I'm holding it. And it's about the size it. of. It's smaller than my iPhone 8 Plus. Yeah. They should... Um, and it has a clip, so you can hook it on, clip it onto your guitar strap. Dude, that, that's the picture I just sent you. The best part is the, <laughs> yeah. the Amazon picture I like that. that just says metal buckle. <laughs> like, <laughs> as, with an arrow pointing to the clip on the back. Metal buckles. They should metal. say built-in irritable drummer. Metal AF. Is built-in irritable drummer. Yeah, exactly. Like, hey, could you slow down a little bit? No. <laughs> I'll play at my <laughs> tempo and you'll adjust. This is what I'm playing. Stubborn drummer. I'm playing to the click. Stubborn, <laughs> stubborn drummer. Um, yeah, I don't get why in the picture it has the metal buckle on his pants. <laughs> I mean, you can put it on your pants too. Yeah, it's a belt buckle. It's a viable use for it. No, and you're I, saying you but put like, it on your strap. Well, it's not really. Yeah, because I've already I got mean, my strap if, on my guitar, so. Yeah, I'll just put this on That's my strap where... on my guitar. Yeah, but it's probably easier to adjust. I mean, not for me because I'd have to like get around my belly or whatever. But well, this gentleman has it like on his back. No, it's like on his. It's like on the left side of his waist. It's. I get what you're it, saying. It's like what you really need to do is wear a full button-up shirt, and then. But yeah, here's what you're really looking missing. Look at his sleeve and look at the little flowery bands on his jacket. I'm not seeing that picture. Oh, it's yeah. the same the, one that you're talking that about. The last picture. It's on the Amazon listing. No, look at the one I sent, Aaron. It's the one that uh, specifically points out the metal buckle. Yeah, dude, what's up with that jacket that guy's wearing? Okay, I'm now I have to look. Sorry. It's got a freaking nice caboose, though, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he must work out. Yeah, dude. <laughs> okay, what am I looking up? Pox. Pox. Plus, it kind of sounds like pop rocks, which is yeah, good. Yeah, Amun. And it also reminds me of the mummy. Anaksunamun. Pop rock. <laughs> uh, I don't know what's happening see, in my Phil, life. See, this is what's good about <laughs> recording in the morning, because we've been going for an hour and a half now. We're still <laughs> feeling great. I'm not worried about right. going to work tomorrow. It's awesome. I don't know if I'm feeling great, I'm but just worried about I see what you're saying. BYU losing to Washington today, but other than that, I'm doing great. I think it's about time we call it. So you'll get an update on this Pock Rock here, and I'm gonna try to find my way oh. into one of those battery powered pedal boards too. Maybe eventually in my life, yeah, dude. Guys, I sold my delay. So listeners, if you're out there, tell me what to buy. Do you want to buy my ARP 87? Uh, $100. No, I'm not really selling it. Okay. I think that's what I got it for, though, <laughs> isn't it? Or maybe it was like 130 I don't know. Anyway. Okay, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, Phil, we're trying. Did you see? There's a good, I think it must be the same. It is the same company, mm-hmm. Amun. Mm-hmm. Guitar effects pedal, Amun Pacman. <laughs> Multi effects pedal strip. Tell me how to spell that. Like Pac Man? Pac Man. <laughs> okay, that's 
Same as when you spell Pock Rock. Yeah, if it's I like a fly Pac, rig. If I search Pokemon, it shows me a bunch of Pokemon. So. It's essentially that is like a sen- that is a fly rig. Yeah, it's pretty cool, dude. That thing's cool. Where are you mm-hmm. guys seeing that? On Amazon. On Amazon. P o c k m o n. One word. <laughs> yeah, I did, and all it shows me is Pokemon stuff. Maybe it's it's weighting it too heavily on my history, probably. So guitar effects pedal. Yeah, they're space. like no one would actually be looking for this. Pokemon. Dude, there's a tiny little amp in the back of that picture too. Um. Moon. Oh, it must not be listed. Oh, I was like limited to musical amp. instruments. Okay. Here we go. Nope, still don't see it. Dude, you don't? No. Oh, like I just searched. Like Amazon is like no. Pokemon. You don't get to see is it this. Two separate words, Pokemon. No, it's one word. Pokemon. It's one word. Send me a Pac-Man. link. Pokemon multi effects pedal. I'll Guys, send you a link. Listeners at home are loving this. They probably already turned off the episode. Ladies, gentlemen, thanks for friendship. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Why are you so put out by this? It's a, it's a great end to this episode. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pressing stop now. This is the end. Okay. Okay. Thanks for friendship. Thanks for friendship. Mm-hmm.